We are asking, what's wrong with religion? It's just one of the questions raised in a new book. Let's keep happening. Raised in a new book called The God Delusion. Uh, we're going to talk to its author, a man who's been dubbed the world's most famous out-of-the-closet living atheist, Richard Dawkins. Richard, good morning to you. Good morning. It's nice to talk to you again. We spoke before once on the similar yes. subject matter. David Quinn is also with us here. David Quinn is a columnist with the Irish Independent. David, very good morning to you. Good morning. So, Richard Dawkins, here you go again, uh, up to your own tricks, uh, in your most recent book, The God Delusion. Let's, let's just talk about the word, if you don't mind, the word delusion. So it puts it into context. Why do you pick well, that the word? word? Well, uh, the, de the word delusion means a falsehood which is widely believed to me, and I think that is true of religion. It is remarkably uh, widely believed. It's as though uh, almost all the population, a substantial po proportion of the population, believed that they'd been abducted by aliens in flying saucers. You'd call that a delusion. I think God is a similar delusion. And would it be fair to say you equate God with, say, the imaginary friend, the bogeyman, or the fairies at the end of the garden? <laughs> Well, I think he's just as probable to exist, yes, and I do discuss um, all those things, especially the imaginary friend, which I think is an interesting uh, psychological phenomenon in childhood, and that may possibly have something to do with the appeal of religion. So take, take us through that a little bit about the imaginary <clears throat> friend factor. Many young children have an imaginary friend who, uh, Christopher Robin had Binker, a little girl who wrote to me, had a little purple man, and the girl with the little purple man actually actually saw him. He, she seemed to hallucinate him. He appeared with a little tinkling bell. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, he was very, very real to her, although in a sense she knew he wasn't real. I suspect that um, something like that is going on with people who claim to have heard God or seen God or hear the voice of God. And we're back to delusion again. And it, would, would, do you think that anyone who believes in God, anyone of any religion, um, is, is deluded? Is that the bottom line with your argument, Richard? Well, there, are, there is a sophisticated form of religion, which, um, in, well, one form of it is Einstein's, which wasn't really religion at all. Einstein used the word God a great deal, but he didn't mean a personal God. He didn't mean a being who could listen to your prayers or forgive your sins. Um, he just meant it as a kind of uh, poetic way of describing the deep unknowns, the deep uncertainties at the root of the universe. Then there are deists who believe in a kind of God, a kind of personal God who set the universe going, a sort of physicist God, but then did no more and certainly doesn't listen to your thoughts, has no personal interest in humans at all. I don't think that I would use a, a word like delusion for, certainly not for Einstein, and I don't think I would for a deist either. Mm. I think I'd reserve the word delusion for real theists who actually think they talk to God and think God talks to them. You, you have a very interesting description in, in the God delusion of the Old Testament God. Do you want to give us that uh, description or will I give it to you back? It, it, what, have you got it in front of you? Yes, I have. Well, why don't you read it out there? Why not? Uh, you <laughs> describe the, uh, God as a misogynistic, homophobic, <clears throat> racist, infanticidal, genocidal, philicidal, pestilential, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bu bu bully. That seems fair enough to me, yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, there are those who would think that's a little over the top. Read your Old Testament if you think that. Just read it. Read Leviticus, read Deuteronomy, read Judges, read Numbers, read Exodus. And do you, is it your contention that these elements of the God, as described by yourself, are what has not, not helped matters in terms of, say, global religion and the wars that go with it? Well, not really, because no serious theologian uh, takes the Old Testament literally anymore, so it isn't quite like that. An awful lot of people think they take the Bible literally, but that can only be because they've never read it. If they ever read it, they couldn't possibly take it literally. But I do think that people are a bit confused about where they get their morality from. A lot of people think they get their morality from the Bible because they can find a few good verses. Parts of the Ten Commandments are okay, parts of the Sermon on the Mount are okay. So they think they get their morality from the Bible. But actually, of course, nobody gets their morality from the Bible. We get it from somewhere else. And to the extent that we can find good bits in the Bible, we cherry pick them. We pick and choose them. We choose the good verses in the Bible and we reject the bad. Whatever criterion we use to choose the good verses and throw out the bad, that criterion is available to us anyway, whether we're religious or not. Why bother to pick verses? Why not just go straight for the morality? 
Do you think that people who believe in God and, and, and in religion generally, uh, who you think that have, you, you, you use the analogy of the imaginary friend, do you think that the people who believe in God and religion are a little bit dim? No, because many of them clearly are highly educated and score highly on IQ tests and things. So, so why I, do they believe in something you th think doesn't exist? Well, I, I think that pe people are sometimes remarkably adept, ad adept at compartmentalizing their mind, at separating their mind into two separate parts. There are some people who even manage to combine being apparently perfectly good working scientists with believing that the book of Genesis is literally true and that the world is only 6,000 years old. If you couldn't perform that level of doublethink, then um, you could do anything. But they might say that they pity you because you don't believe in what they think is fundamentally true. Well, they might, and we'll, we'll have to argue it out by looking at the evidence. The great thing is to argue it by looking at evidence, not just to say, oh, well, this is my faith, there's no argu argument to be had, you can't argue with faith. David Quinn, a columnist with the Irish Independent, show us some evidence, please. Well, I mean, the first thing I'd say is that uh, Richard Dawkins is doing what he commonly does, which is he's setting up straw men, so he puts... He puts God in the same. He puts believing in God in the same category as believing in fairies. Well, you know, children stop believing in fairies when they stop being children, but they usually don't stop believing in God because belief in God, to my mind, is a much more rational proposition than believing in fairies or Santa Claus. Do we have more fairies. proof that God well, exists than we do I'll, for fairies? I'll come to that in a second. Okay. I mean, the second thing is about compartmentalizing yourself, and he uses examples of well, you've got the you've got intelligent people who somehow or other also believe the world is only six thousand years old and we have a young earth and they don't believe in evolution. But again, I mean, that's too stark in either or. I mean, there are many people who believe in God but also believe in evolution and believe the universe is 20 billion years old and believe fully in Darwinian evolution or whatever the case may be. Now, I mean, in all arguments about the existence and non-existence of God, I mean, often these things don't even get off the launch pad because the two people debating can't even agree on where the burden of proof rests. There's a rest with those who are trying to prove the existence of God or does arrest with those who are trying to disprove the existence of God. But I suppose, you know, if I bring this onto Richard Dawkins' turf and we talk about the theory of evolution, the theory of evolution explains how matter, which we're all made from, organized itself into, for example, highly complex beings like Richard Dawkins and Ryan Tuberty and other human beings. But what it doesn't explain, just to give one example, is how matter came into being in the first place. That, in scientific terms, is a question that cannot be answered and can only be answered, if it can be answered fully at all, by um, philosophers and theologians, but it certainly can't be answered by science. And the question of whether God exists or not cannot be answered fully by science either. And commonly, and, uh, and a common mistake that people can believe is, the scientist who speaks about evolution w w with all the authority of science can also speak about the existence of God with all the authority of science, and of course he can't. The scientist speaking about the existence of God is actually engaging in philosophy or theology, but he certainly isn't bringing to it the authority of science per Back se. Back to the original question. Have you any mm -hmm. evidence for me? Well, I would say the existence of matter itself. I would say the existence of morality. Myself and Richard Dawkins would have a clearly different understanding of the origins of morality, I would say free will. If you are an atheist, if you're an atheist, logically speaking, you cannot believe in objective morality. You cannot believe in free will. These are two things that the vast majority of humankind implicitly believe in. We believe, for example, that if a person carries out a bad action, we can call that person bad because we believe that they are freely choosing those actions. Okay, no, uh, 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 just quickly, an atheist mm -hmm. believes we are controlled completely by our genes and have, make no free actions at all. What evidence do you have, Richard Dawkins, that you're right? 